Hello, everyone. I must welcome you all to the webinar series Future You Set Your Career Compass Right with Experts Insight. And I'm Kalyani, your host for this webinar. So, in this session on careers in marketing, we will be focusing on the topic how to become an area sales manager in FMCG sector. And in this session, you'll find out about the roles and responsibilities of an area sales manager, how an MBA helps in jump starting a marketing career. How important is a sales profile to build a marketing career? A skills and profile building tips from our speaker and more. So let's welcome our speaker. We have Isha Dave. She's an area sales manager at PepsiCo India and an alumna of JBIMS. She studied BA, LLB, honors and law from GNLU before choosing to pursue an MBA and a career in marketing. So welcome and thank you so much for being here today, Isha, uh, for this session. So, Hi, thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for having me here. <laughs> yeah, so let's start from the beginning. So tell us about your career progression from law to MBA. Um, so I actually um, pursued my law degree from Gujarat National University. It's a university in Gandhinagar. And um, immediately after graduating from there, I decided I joined my MBA course uh, in 2019. And I pursued my MBA in marketing from Jamnal Bajaj in Mumbai. Um, so that was majorly my two-year um, two uh, experience that I had there. And um, as uh, during my MBA uh, course, I had an internship. After the summer placements, I got an internship with PepsiCo India. And uh, after my internship, I had a PPO offer. Uh, so I got a PPO and I joined them as a management trainee. And uh, I'm currently as, uh, working with them as an area sales manager. Okay, but uh, can you tell us about why... Uh... I mean, after law, why MBA and then why marketing? Yeah, can you take us through that decision as in how it all uh, panned out for you? Sure. Um, so actually, when I was, um, so over the course of my five-year law degree, I had around nine internships. So I interned in both the litigation side as well as the corporate side. And um, during my internships, I realized that uh, I didn't really like litigation. Um, and for the corporate, I was working on the back end because when a uh, when a deal comes through, the decision making is already ta has already taken place, and post that um, the, post that you actually get the uh, agreement. You're supposed to make the agreement, and you're supposed to draft the contracts for them or give them advice as a uh, advisory council. So that wasn't something that uh, interested me too much, and I wanted to be where the decision making is actually taking place. So I wanted to be at the front end and not in a back end role. Uh, so, which is why I decided in my fifth year that I need to switch. And I started um, studying uh, the entrance exams and uh, I decided I need to move into MBA. So that was the major reason for moving into MBA because that is something that would um, push me into the front end. Uh, why marketing? So I'll just give you a brief background about yeah. me as a person. Uh, sure. So. I am someone who, um, so I actually have a bachelor's degree uh, in uh, Indian folk dance too. And uh, I am a trained Kathak dancer and I'm also a singer and a keyboard. Uh, I, I play the keyboard. So I have always had varied interests right uh, on the creative side. So the easiest way um, and the easiest and the uh, most, probably the stream that aligned with me, with, uh, with what I, with my personality, is uh, marketing as over an HR or a finance degree there. So this was the major reason. And I think I was also ve always very interested in understanding how, um, you know, products reach the consumer uh, at the end, uh, how a sales system is structured, and also to understand basically um, what a brand stands for. How do you decide how a brand, uh, you know, what the brand should be positioned as? Uh, or what the brand identity is. So this is something that I was always interested in. And um, personally, marketing just aligned better, market sales and marketing aligned better with my personality. So that is why I went for uh, marketing. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's talk about then about, you know, how uh, the your journey from PPO with Pepsi, PepsiCo uh, to uh, your being area sales manager and uh, I believe in the Gujarat sector, right? You're looking after that. Yeah. So how did that happen and how exactly? Um, and you can also uh, tell us a little bit about the roles and responsibilities 
that is what an area sales manager does and where you uh, and and where exactly your career began as an as a management trainee what were you doing and then you know yeah okay um so to give you a background i i'm a fresher uh, i had no work experience i didn't have a um, so i joined immediately i graduated in 2019 from law school and that was the year i joined uh, mba so i didn't uh, i didn't have work experience beforehand so uh, when pepsico came to college uh, for uh, summer placements i um, i had an offer from them uh, and i interned with them as a summer intern so that was again a sales internship and not a marketing internship um post uh, i had a ppi and uh, after that we had uh, i was um, offered a ppo and uh, when i joined uh, i joined pepsico in around uh, in july 2021 and um, so we have a one year management trainee stint so a management trainee stint um for sales interns is always going to be a management trainee internship a management trainee stint in sales so this is structured over a year and uh, we have different stints so we had uh, we start right from understanding how a sales person works so i worked with a sales person for two weeks i was the sales person for one area for one distributor for two weeks post that i was working as a shadow uh, uh, i was shadowing the person who's managing the sales person um then i started working and uh, managing a team of six sales persons uh, which was a short stint we had a stint for around 3 months uh, but i was completely responsible for the distributor um for how the sales are taking place in the market it was a small area it was an area in goregaon in mumbai and um, post that i actually shadowed an asm uh so this was my major understanding so an asm was the one who's managing the managers of sales people so uh and my asm shadow i managed around five uh, asms four five asms okay. and uh, along the way i actually uh, after this shadow stint i actually had a marketing stint in the middle so pepsico does give you a flavor of a marketing stint uh, most uh, most organizations do actually so i had a marketing stint for around 4 uh, to 6 weeks so mine was around 6 uh, weeks uh, so i had a short marketing stint with the team and uh, post that i became an independent asm okay. and for this uh, so it was this was again during the management trainee period and for this i was actually based out of chennai okay so i was managing the northern part of chennai uh, for uh for pepsico india as a management trainee uh then we had a review and after i was confirmed uh they moved me to uh, gujarat so currently i manage the southern part of gujarat for pepsico so central and southern part of gujarat uh so now uh so it's been a couple of months into my stint as an asm and just to give you a brief um you know uh, overview of what the roles and responsibilities oh. are yeah um so i think it'd be easier to categorize them into two parts so if you say um on the technical side uh an asm is basically responsible for uh, identifying how to increase and maximize the sales of that area okay um we are responsible for absolutely everything right from understanding which product is to be available in which quantity at mm-hmm. which cfa okay. so the cfa is the carrying and forwarding agent so we are responsible in deciding which product should be available and in what quantity right to the sales that takes place in the market so everything from there to how it's going to reach the consumer is our responsibility in the market okay so this will include again um demand planning uh, identifying the gaps um a lot of data analysis uh will be a part of um okay. will be part okay. of the mm. asm then when you move okay. into the um behavioral aspect the behavioral responsibility rather mm. um will be um the most important one would be people management okay i think that is something that only being an asm at this age the, the mm. being an asm that's the only thing that that's the most important thing um personally okay. as an asm because okay. um, at this okay. stage in your career this is probably one of the few roles where you will get to manage a team of people is it true that sales and marketing uh, is the one uh, function wherein uh, more freshers are being preferred is is this something that is uh, is it a myth or is it something that no. i don't think that's true mm. my okay. experience from the colleagues that i've worked with and my friends 
Hmm. Um, my batch of management trainees also mix it. Okay. Um, we are okay. some of us are uh, ha- are freshers, and some of them have two years work experience. In fact, two three years. Okay. 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 So okay. it's a mixed batch, and I don't think that's that's something that anyone should think about because if you're okay. shortlisted for something, mm. you're there. It means that they're interested in, uh, in at least interviewing you. Right. They see you as a potential candidate. So okay. I don't think that's something that you should really think so much about. Okay. 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 So uh, yeah, there's a question. Uh, can you please share what are must have analytical technical skills in sales and marketing so we will be taking uh, this question as i hear when we are when our speaker will be talking about the skill sets because you know we will talk about the hard skills and the soft skills that are required in this particular field so yeah you uh, yeah we will be talking about that in a bit uh, apart from mba is there any other masters course we can do which will help us to get a career in marketing yeah so maybe you know you can just uh, also cover this with along with my question of where to begin in a career in marketing is mba the best way to start because since you know you did say that you know you had to start also from sales so yes. we'll talk about that as well in a bit so yeah, yeah. so but uh, where to begin in a career in the marketing if you're a fresher uh, is mba the best way to go for it or if there is any other uh, field or course that one can do and then get into marketing um if you ask me for my personal opinion i do feel uh, an mba is probably an area that i would suggest uh, only for the fact that uh, one obviously on campus unfortunately i was a part of the covid batch uh, but uh, uh, i know on campus you'll have a lot of interactions we had 6 months on campus so we had offline college for 6 months um so you do the interactions that take place the group discussions the case studies they are very very important and they definitely do help you because you start understanding more about and getting different perspectives from people because i was the only lawyer in my batch i was in a batch full of engineers um there was someone who had done medicine uh in my senior batch so you will get a lot of diversity and a different um, set of people to uh, speak to you learn a lot more and also i personally feel mba does open up a lot of doors and avenues for you because um, that's a level playing field and i personally feel yeah um, i think that would definitely help okay okay yeah so uh, okay then let's talk about the uh, uh, what are the uh, typical what's how is a typical day for you as a area sales manager at pepsi okay honestly as an area sales manager as an asm no two days are the same so they are very very different like i'll give okay. you an example um so uh there are days when i go to market which mm. means i go to the rural parts or the urban parts depending upon the territory that i am placed in and um, that's when we go uh, we meet the distributors we meet the sales persons we work with them we go to retail outlets we go to kirana stores and uh, we interact with them we actually get real time feedback we meet consumers who are there uh that's when we'll get the you know the the good and the bad parts of our um, products it's it's that's how it is for everyone so we'll get feedback from them and that's the only thing that helps us actually um improve the product or our offerings uh so once you go to market you understand so going to market will basically involve um, probably for me if i'm going to rural markets um uh i like a couple of days ago just to give you an example i traveled with my team um and we went to the south part of southern most part of gujarat we went to wapi we went to nijar and we went to these small rural villages um wapi is not a village but we went to nijar nijar is like the bordering uh, village it's the last village in gujarat so we went there because that's a um, territory that we're looking at so we went there we reached out to potential uh, distributors um visited retailers asked them how the sales are taking place um then we met sales persons we have meetings with them we tell them what our agenda is uh so this is what a day in the market will look like for you um on the other hand uh, the flip side would be working on data so i obviously don't do market every day because as an asm you're not expected uh, to do market every day because you have a lot of um data and technical work also 
so um, during my days when i sit and work on data i generally um, try and see what the trend has been so um, if i just pick up a particular sku supposing for us we have doritos so i pick up doritos and i will check what our sales in doritos has been in the past couple of months then i will try and identify okay why have we fallen in a particular geography or why has it increased or at a, even at a distributor or a sales person level then when you dive deep you know you have an uh, analysis of that you'll be able to understand where the gap is in the market so okay. accordingly you can make a strategy for that so that is the other half but alongside this on that day i have reviews with my teams also okay. it depends on our strategy so we sit down and work on data and uh, that's a very important part honestly uh mm-hmm. both roles are very important data analysis is also equally important as uh, going to the field and actually going and working there so but no two days look the same and there's there's a lot of variety honestly as an asm okay okay so uh, uh can you tell us about uh, uh, at pepsi uh how much of your learning uh, from an mba since i'm asking you this question because uh, you were fresher and uh, you know and after a particular field and then you know you i mean in law and then you know you were interning in uh, you know with lawyers and all and then you know you you uh, joined an mba and then immediately you know you joined uh, pepsi so that's why i you know this question is specifically for you as in how much of whatever you learned at the b school how much of that really helps you in a in your day to day as an understanding data crunching data uh um, how to go about uh, how to uh, you know understand the uh, issues that are probably there in the market and to uh, you know fill in the gaps and all that how do uh, how much of the, your mba has helped you with that Did you uh, get the question? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I did. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there are a couple of subjects that do help you. I understand when you join a B school, they tend to focus on marketing uh, subjects. If you take um, uh, if you specialize in marketing, but um, there are a couple of subjects. So we had a subject called sales and distribution uh, management. So that was probably the most important subject for me because that's when I learned how a sales system works. what the gtm strategy is what is a cfa um it you won't get the on ground experience um from the core subjects that you're studying obviously because it's going to be a lot of um the te- a lot of the teachers teaching you um you you'll be reading about it you won't be getting an on hands um, you know hands on experience sorry hands on uh, on ground experience um but you will definitely get a flavor and an idea at least you'll get the idea of what it is which definitely helps you there so this is my personal opinion on that um uh, from the subjects point of view in uh, mbs in b school okay okay yeah okay let's take a few questions there are a few questions here um yeah can you um what are some uh, some resume points which you think one needs to have to stand out for summer internship so let's talk about your uh, profile building tips and also along with it you can also answer this one as in what all uh, one should ideally have in the summer to, to yeah to stand up part from in your summer internship also you can talk about your own experience as in you know did you coming from a very different field uh did that kind of had that thing that oh i mean uh, engineer 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 and then uh, <laughs> law <laughs> yeah um okay so hmm. yes uh i'm 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 certain that my diverse background hmm. in both terms of law as well as having a degree in dance um pursuing dance um you know uh did help pursuing dance and music did help so i think one thing that's very important is uh, probably if you don't have if you're an engineer it's perfectly fine but um, i think having your own interests is mm. probably something that i would really really consider as important right because, okay um, i know someone who's interview was based only on his interest for biking his summer interview okay and he got an internship he converted that and got a ppo there okay so right. um, he hmm. uh, loved biking and his interview was only based on 
Okay. Okay. So I would definitely uh, suggest you should pursue something alongside this. Mm. Uh, I'm not telling you to do a full time, uh, full time thing. Uh, okay. But even just something, some interest that you have, it can be cooking. It can be cooking. Mm. It can be reading, for that matter. Okay. Mm. It can be absolutely anything. Um, another thing that I uh, that I would personally suggest. This is something I did. Is I took up a couple of life projects. Okay. Uh, so when you okay. join, school, so yeah, when you join B school, you get an opportunity to work with uh, different companies for life projects. Mm. So you generally get these offers through placement committees, or you go and apply on your own. You will find them on LinkedIn also. You can. There are different avenues to get these. So okay. I had three life projects actually. Mm. Um, okay. This was uh, after my summer placement, mm. uh, but before my uh, summer internship. Okay. Um, so I had three. I worked with. Uh, so I worked in both sales as well as marketing. Okay. Uh, so I did one. I did two sales projects. One was an e-commerce one with Mama Earth. Mm. Uh, second was a um, traditional trade sales project with Hershey's. Okay. And the third was a marketing one with Nestle. Okay. Okay. So I would really suggest. I know everyone mm-hmm. suggests two courses. Mm-hmm. Uh, courses are important to help right. build your profile to give you a flavor of uh, what you're actually liking. Mm. But um, personally, I feel if you want the actual experience in marketing, go mm. for a life project or okay. go for an internship. Okay. So for life projects, how did you uh, get connected to these? Uh, how did you get to know about these life projects? Okay, through LinkedIn uh, so, or through your B school, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So we actually, so a lot of these B schools have tie-ups hmm. uh, with other, um, uh, with other companies um, hmm. that help pull you, and you know that come on campus or open up opportunities. So we had a lot of opportunities actually in my B school. In okay. They had shared, or uh, even uh, there were a lot of startups that actually come and they ask you. Otherwise, um, there are different avenues. You'll find a lot on LinkedIn too. Okay. And it's short-term projects, so mm-hmm. you will mm-hmm. definitely get an experience there. So I would definitely suggest go for some of those. Okay, so profile tips you are saying one is of course you know work on something that you are passionate about, hobbies, yes. something, and and be consistently into it. And the other thing is yeah, if you can figure out some life projects and all that, and maybe uh, okay, most of our uh, attendees are the ones you know who are pra- who are preparing for CAT this year they'll be taking CAT this year so yeah so for them I guess you know life projects and is only for B school once you are in B school or can you also apply for life projects when you are not as in before getting into a B school uh, is it possible generally it's for B school no it's okay for okay yeah. yeah so then uh, what what can these guys do as in you know the ones you know who are uh, basically you know preparing for CAT not been to a B school yet and would probably like to have something, some concrete something on their profile to talk about. And, you know, and if, especially if they're freshers. Um, you can do a couple of courses because that's something mm. that I had done too. Okay. So, um, what are the courses that you did? So I obviously did the um, standard Google courses. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but I wouldn't suggest those. Hmm. Uh, they're good for the CV, but okay. um, you should provide it you're doing it well. You should mm. probably so Google has a lot of free ones, but um, otherwise you have a couple of courses from Yale. Mm. Um, they can be in absolutely anything. You can do okay. a course even if you want to pursue a degree in marketing. You can definitely do one in finance. It's perfectly yeah. fine mm. okay. because um, that that's just going to give you a flavor. It's just going to give them diversity when you apply for it. Mm. I had done a course on balance sheets. Okay. <laughs> So yeah. you have a couple of courses like that. Uh, Yale University has a lot of courses mm. Um, mm. that you can pursue. You can look for psychology courses too. It, okay. it really doesn't matter, but have something that stands out at the end of the day. Correct. Yeah. Mm. And with psychology, I guess, you no. Know, yeah. If you are into marketing, you can probably connect that with this. Yeah. Mm. Definitely. Mm. And generally, HRs also take interviews. So a lot of. Okay. So mm. my uh, the the person who took my interview was actually mm. um she had done her MBA in psych. Uh, sorry, her um, undergraduate degree in psychology. Okay. Mm. So mm. that does help if you're interested in something like that. So I would definitely suggest you pursue a course too. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's talk about the skill sets now. Uh, Three hard skills that are required in marketing career. So I'm talking about marketing, marketing, as in in the sense like sales and marketing. Yeah. And uh, three soft skills that are required. 
So you did talk about a little bit about the including, yeah. yeah your area sales manager you know the kind of skills that you are anyway using every day but yeah also in hard skills you know how much of numbers you have to crunch do you really have to be really good with numbers yeah all that excel sheets and everything huh. okay uh, so in the hard skills i think most the most important one would be analytical skills okay you have to understand what the data is uh, what the data is trying to tell you um, okay. only when you understand that will you identify what the white space is once you identify the white space your job is literally done because when you identify the white space you know how to reach there so that is the most important thing an analytical skill will involve yes you're right it involves a lot of number crunching it does involve that um but honestly yeah. it's not rocket science okay hmm. it's not rocket science i'm not an engineer hmm. i am i yeah. was i was hmm. not even doing anything close to uh, anything that's mathematical related correct yeah uh, hmm. i am a lawyer i did hmm. science till the 12th but hmm. uh, i i i didn't have any anything related to like you know i know engineers keep um, working with numbers and data yes. yeah hmm. but it's okay Mm. Okay. Mm. so don't uh, worry about that part mm. if that is a worry in anyone's mind um you will manage uh mm. for number crunching yes analytical skills yes definitely uh, that is probably the most important one and that covers everything uh data analysis uh, forecasting forecasting is another skill actually um because that becomes important for demand planning mm. Mm. so we Correct. are responsible for um, identifying how much of what sku we want what stock we want in which at which place okay so i think that is another skill that would be very important um as a um you know as an area sales manager um and um, on the soft skill side i'll just cover it with literally one thing people management and people management if you want me to break it down we'll have three other skills communications you will have your interpersonal so communication will be how are you communicating with other people and are you able to put across your idea to them um then you will have your interpersonal skill which will be something like um you know how do you get along with people how do you get along with people how are you managing a team and the third is emotional intelligence um i think emotional intelligence is probably the most important skill that you require because this is something that i am i learned and i'm still learning uh how do you deal with people how do you work with people uh who have a different style of working okay mm-hmm. someone who Correct. requires that additional praise mm. and you know who requires that focus that you know that praise and how will you work alongside them or how will you work alongside mm. someone who uh, is a fantastic person who's fantastic at the job that he does mm. but um you know might be slightly emotional so might okay. be having emotional outbursts so yeah. how do you work <laughs> alongside okay. such mm. people so that is probably mm. the most important thing the most right. important thing is, and it's something you can learn okay it's again okay. something you can learn but so, very important. but do you learn see um uh, these skills the ones that you, you know you spoke about in the soft skills yes. people management and then you know emotional quotient, you know the emotional quotient and everything mm-hmm. how do you work i mean uh, isn't it with experience that you know you probably learn or is it like something that you can learn otherwise like you know how you learn how to crunch data is there a way for them to actually if you don't have the skill you learn uh i am probably not the most extroverted person okay <laughs> uh, i am mm. definitely not the most extroverted person but okay. you learn you learn honestly in b school also you get opportunities you um mm. you're a part of case study competitions okay yeah you work with a team mm. you work okay. with a team there you are making presentations mm. you can be part of committees mm. uh there are a lot of different avenues before you even join your organization okay yeah so definitely don't require or you're not inherently supposed to be that mm. you can definitely learn it's something that you learn but you you it's provided that you want to learn um from the soft skills i think i think a lot of it would be oh, one thing is multitasking mm. 
मल्टीटास्किंग मल्टीटास्किंग ओके ओके मल्टीटास्किंग um so uh honestly i'm again disclaimer i am from the covid batch yeah yeah um, that's so true. unfortunately apart from like a 6 month experience of offline college mm. i did not really get to experience the entire you know what an mba um, degree is like mm. but mm. Uh, i'll just tell you my journey so um bajaj starts late generally uh, my college is the last college to start so we had our summer placements in october and um, which is when i got uh, placed in pepsico so it is again you know how the final placements take place so it was very rigorous week but it was probably the, one of the um, you know the week where you learn the most it's you do learn a lot okay. you it starts at 5 am we were called at 4:30 am one day and it ends probably at like 11 12 in the night but uh, that's an experience uh, yeah. that's that's honestly an experience um i so after pepsico after getting a summer internship i also joined a committee on college okay so yeah. colleges have a lot of committees mm-hmm. and um, i would definitely suggest if you get a chance please do join them so i did join a committee i was a part of the corporate relations committee okay uh, and um, so as a part of the committee you were a team of around 8 to 10 people and mm-hmm. uh, it was a lot of uh, it was a lot of learning mm-hmm. if we learned a lot uh i learned a lot especially in that committee um alongside this so obviously then you have your exams and all but alongside this uh, there were case studies that i did okay. take mm-hmm. so there was a shaomi case study you have a lot of companies coming on campus um that's also a way to actually get summer internships or final placements okay um, okay because um if you win a competition or your runners up they do offer you internship opportunities or uh, you know um ppos direct ppos also for some people in case you're really good so i have couple of friends who have joined through that rather than the internship route um then obviously we had lockdown uh, and uh, during lockdown i actually worked before lockdown i worked on my tt life project with hershey's and post that i worked on mama earth and then i had my two month summer internship with pepsico and um, then i had my uh, yeah the the so then post my internship there was uh, the brand project the brand life project with nestle and um, after that we had my ppi okay uh, so my ppi yeah i had my ppi in around december in uh, yeah uh, it was in december in the first week of december and um, that's when i actually got confirmed and uh, yeah that is what my journey actually looked like this is just a very brief thing i honestly did not get the actual experience there correct yeah yeah hmm. uh what is some uh, pre mba preparation one needs to do before getting into a b school uh with respect to sales and marketing pre mba preparation is yeah. it in terms of um, like yeah as in before getting into an mba before before getting into a b school is there anything that you know you did like you know you already know uh, and once you already know which b school you are getting in Mm-hmm. and then you know there is that time yes between you know you're going for your first class and everything yes. and joining yeah so in that period what all would you say that a student should do to make the most um i tell you what i did so i got admission in i think april i'm not too sure i think it was april and my college started in uh, august to september so after graduating from law school i um, i actually interned I interned at a firm, so it wasn't a law firm. I interned at um, this place called KR Choksi. So they're in, um, they're actually in the share market. So it's an investment firm, but I interned there because I wanted to understand both the financial as well as the, um, you know, as well as the overall picture of what a company is. So I would um, sit and study, um, you know, I'd studied HUL. as a brand i studied at so my project was actually on hul so i worked on understanding the model that hul has 
and um, you know the balance sheet the financial statements for hul so i would definitely suggest do that because that is probably and yes that is another thing that probably helped me um, get shortlisted because i was the i was one of the few people who actually interned in such a place and already had overviews of different companies too. so i'd worked on britannia initially and then i moved in uh, moved on to hul so i did the entire analysis for hul company analysis Okay. So I would definitely suggest mm. if you get a chance do that and do courses. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. So I did a couple of courses too. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And uh, how long are the working hours? Yeah. So what's the what's the <laughs> yeah? Is it a very stressful uh job? As in everybody knows that you know sales and marketing they are the ones you know sales are the sales people are the one who's big bringing the business and bringing. in the money so obviously you know there must be a lot of stress involved so how much of stress there is how much of a work life balance is there in 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 this particular field yeah and how many hours do you work <laughs> yeah uh, i'll answer from the perspective like from the point of view okay. of so yeah yeah um i'm very lucky honestly i am very lucky uh i have an organization i'm in, i'm a part of the organ of an organization that doesn't really put pressure on you um you do get a work life balance like i still pursue music and dance in fact uh, after joining i actually started like uh, uploading reels on uh, because okay. i i just wanted to i need an outlet for my you know for my other passions so yeah, i started yeah. uh, recording videos mm. for dance and music and okay. um, it's just something i do in my free time as a hobby mm. so uh, i wouldn't say the it i wouldn't say it's easy but i wouldn't say it's difficult either okay and uh, i'm very lucky uh, in the okay. sense of uh, having an organization that that is willing and is supporting me in this way mm. um when it comes to my working hours it differs um okay. if i'm going to market and if i'm going to an up country area like i'm going to a rural part where i have to mm. travel for 3 4 hours to reach that area um it probably starts at around 8 am Okay. Um, because we take another three, four hours to reach. Hmm. Uh, it probably starts then, and obviously you can understand it ends also quite late. But every day won't be that way. Hmm. Um, it's it's interspersed. Sometimes if I have a city market, my day would probably start at um, nine o'clock or nine thirty. Okay. Okay. So my day would start at that time. So it's not hmm. that it has to start at eight a.m. or seven a.m. every day. No, it doesn't. Hmm. Um, and it generally ends. It's a reasonable hour. It ends at by you know if you're working on data, then I hmm. I have a stop. It depends on the day again. If there's too hmm. much work, then I obviously work into the night. But um, otherwise, I sometimes just um, have a stop at around seven thirty eight, which hmm. is a good enough time, honestly, because you require that time to uh, actually sit down and work on the data. Okay. Hmm. Okay. But please don't go with the misconception that uh, hmm. if you're in sales, you can't do anything else. You definitely. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, can you talk about like a maybe a challenging situation that you have had so far as a area sales manager? Okay. So this is probably not as an um, ASM, like in this stint, but in my management training stint. Um. Yeah. Okay. I. Works. I am. Uh, I am not. So I am born and brought up in Bombay, uh, and uh, I was moved to Chennai for my stint. I don't know Tamil. I don't know Tamil. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that was something that was very different for me. That was something that was very very different because I had to speak sales words and and. help them understand what i'm trying to say because obviously there is a language barrier there so that was probably the most challenging but the most fun experience that i've had i am very thankful i got this opportunity because i don't think i would have gone voluntarily it wasn't a voluntary thing let me be very honest when you're a management trainee it's not voluntary so it wasn't voluntary but it was probably the best experience that i've had because i understood how to speak to them in a language in a way that they understand which is where i think my communication skills in, improved 100% it is there that my that i learned how to communicate 
ओके ओके या कैन यू टॉक इन डिटेल अबाउट द सेल्स स्टिंट दैट यू हैड एट द स्टार्ट लाइक द कोर सेल्स पर्सन स्टिंट एज अ मैनेजमेंट ट्रेनिंग सी अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल हैव दिस मिसकंसेप्शन समटाइम्स दैट इफ यू डू एन एमबीए एंड यू चूज मार्केटिंग यू कैन प्रॉब्ली बायपास sales role yeah so uh we also need to cover that bit that there is no escape from sales in marketing so there has to have some amount of sales and so you can take this question uh as in you know the core sales person stint as a management trainee along with my question of how much of a sales profile helps somebody in marketing yeah okay so i completely understand the misconception so so misconception everyone had when they joined us yeah um there are companies that uh, come for internships for you know in the fmcg sector i am not going to name companies but there are uh, companies that organizations that are there and they give you a marketing internship but once they can you they will make you an area sales manager after the management trainee stint so uh in the fmcg sector it is very important to do an asm stint i understand where that comes from uh when you are doing marketing when you are a brand manager or you are into marketing you do require to understand what the ground reality is you are making a product for the consumers if you don't understand what the consumers want or what the sales team is what the feed the feedback that the sales team is providing you you are not going to make products that are that last for long so sales is very very important at least one stint in sales is extremely important in the fmcg sector and um, to answer the other question on what is this, the the sales person stint is that the question like yes, what yeah as a, as a management trainee you know uh, like the core sales person role that you have had yeah um so i'm guessing she's the, the uh, they're asking me whether um what my sales person stint was which is the first mm-hmm. stint that I had. yeah 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 um so that stint um was very different okay. so i was actually the one who so we have a handheld device mm-hmm. and we actually take orders for order taking and we take orders in the device so okay. i okay. was given mm-hmm. that device mm-hmm. and i would go from outlet to outlet around mm-hmm. 30 40 outlets in a day so and you can imagine it's bombay market yeah. doing the whole market is a walking market uh, so i easily reach like 10000 15000 steps a day at that point of time yeah and uh, you go to market you have the handle in your hand and mm. you're punching in orders okay you speak to the retailer and ask them okay what do you want okay you mm. know why don't you try this product we have a new launch why don't you see this mm. so you're doing that post which you are going back to the distributor point um then you're feeding in the orders okay um you are actually processing the entire thing uh, and you are completing that uh, alongside this i actually had a delivery stint so my manager um, at that time made me uh, made me go on deliveries so okay. he sent me um, <laughs> my manager asked me to go with the delivery people so i was packing boxes uh, we had like the lays and kurkure packets and i was packing them individually in boxes and carrying them around yeah <laughs> carrying them around and going on tempos and trucks with them okay, i can so, imagine um, it was, it was after an mba <laughs> oh it it was a two weeks stint but it was fantastic okay it was fantastic because see after that i'm never doing that again correct okay, yeah but it's very important for me to have that experience i didn't understand it at that point of time too but mm. it's very important for me to have that experience because mm. that's when i can understand okay what are their problems mm. and how can i solve it for them correct yeah mm. so mm. that is that was just the starting stint but um, yeah that that is the sales person stint that i had <laughs> yeah okay yeah but uh, tell me uh, for in fmcg sector as an area sales manager is it like you know during festival uh, f- during festivals and all you have a very uh, that's a uh, more stressful time because you know de- uh, su- demand and supply is at its peak for certain products and all that is that how it is or is it consistently stressful understanding how much of uh, if supply is there or not or if demand is there or not you know how does it all work out um so yeah uh, fmcg sector is seasonal hmm um yeah. like um 
so you have your uh, cold drinks your beverages mm. Mm. beverages have their peak in the summer months correct whereas we don't have a peak in the summer months we have a peaks later but oh, okay. um, yeah so i work in the foods part actually okay so i work mm. in the foods part for pepsico so i handle right. your kurkure doritos cheetos okay uh, chips lays all of those mm-hmm. so um, these are not in, during summer this is not going on peak like not the really. sales okay it's, not really um, mm. not really because okay. schools are closed Mm, okay yeah that closed so uh so it's not our peak it is mm. the time for uh you know your ice creams or your beverages mm. um then a uh, uh, cadbury if you okay. take cadbury into consideration cadbury will like, obviously peak again during diwali right or yeah gifting and all festival. correct mm. so every industry has their own peaks and their highs and uh you actually prepare beforehand because mm. it's a cycle it's a 12 month cycle so you understand what is going to happen then so you do prepare beforehand your demands are also given a month in advance mm. so you do prep prepare the stress level doesn't increase actually because mm. the uh, demand from the market automatically increases too so mm. the stress level doesn't increase as such but yeah maybe you have to work a bit extra okay mm. okay uh, how does a career trajectory in sales look like Oh, beyond an area sales manager. Mm. So I'll just tell you um, what the yeah, thing- just the rough uh, steps. Okay. Yeah, and um, where it leads finally. Sure. Mm. So, um, so after like an after an ASM, you can actually join. You you have these roles called trade marketing roles, or someone yeah. who's the who's the in charge for GTM. GTM is your market strategy, like okay. opening. You know where are the vacant areas. Uh, opening new outlets opening okay. new wholesalers mm. tapping new towns okay. maybe there's a town that you don't service okay so that is something that comes under gtm leads um mm. then you also have trade marketing trade marketing will be related to um you know what price what discount should we give the retailers mm. what discount um, should we give the consumers should we give an additional discount mm. how should we market it to them in the market itself Um, how should our racks look so if i don't know if you've noticed but pepsico has a lot of racks like how mm. you have the beverage coolers mm. you have fridges for beverages mm. we also have racks that we make mm. so that uh, falls under trade marketing apart from that you can actually move into this is traditional trade okay so you have a vertical called organized trade okay so a modern trade which mm. is catering to your dmarts uh you know your bigger chains your dmart clients um uh you know your big baskets so okay. they can do that so you can become a manager for one of those you can become the point of contact so there are people who are the point of contact between an ex organization and maybe a big basket okay so you can become the point of contact there post mm-hmm. that then obviously you have zonal manager roles mm-hmm. so a zonal manager will be again um someone like um, who's managing maybe three states okay so they have asms under them so you become a zonal manager post that then obviously you can manage units so your unit manager will be um you know unit manager will handle the entire unit like maybe the west zone or the east zone so they'll handle those areas or you become uh, you become the one person who's in charge of india level so india level strategies again you have bifurcations it's going to be very detailed if i explain it right now so you again have bifurcations there and post that you have your national sales head okay 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 and uh, and the thing is like i'm from area sales manager one can also become uh, you know one can choose to get into pure marketing and all that and like brand management and yeah so yeah category so, management correct yeah. someone hmm. asked me for sales so i said sales uh-huh. but definitely from asm you can enter brand you can okay. become an abm you can the category you can definitely hmm. but Depends how much of the, uh, how much of market research you need to be doing as a area sales manager uh, as yeah as a area sales manager um our market research is actually what we uh, see on field okay. okay we are actually going to market uh, our team is going every day so my mm. team uh, that reports into me goes every day to market okay so they already give me that feedback and i get additional mm. feedback when i go to market 
There's a question mark. Please list the tools or analytics courses to do for, for understanding data analytics. Uh, so the ones you know you were, you were talking about. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So I, uh, the most important thing for analysis is Excel. You need to know Excel. Yeah. I hmm. did a course on Excel. Uh, hmm. This is what I did before my MBA actually. Started. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Okay. So, so that's I, something that even Zera can also do. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, but this was after I got my college. So alongside hmm. my internship. Because hmm. I had time on my hand, hmm. I did a course on Excel. However, just one warning, just because you've done a course on Excel doesn't mean you know Excel inside out. You <laughs> yeah. have to keep practicing it. Hmm. So something yeah. I realized during my internship. And hmm. um, I think once you have the basic Excel, you really don't require too much. Just learn everything to pivot tables. Pivot okay. tables are the most important thing that you'll be doing every day. Day yeah, in and day out. You don't need yeah. macros. You don't need all of that. Hmm. Pivot table you're good enough. Yeah. You're this, good for that. Uh, hmm, yeah. Hmm. So I think Excel, that part of Excel, um, you have a couple of courses on data and analytics. Hmm. Um, I have not, I personally not done them. Okay. Uh, I learned only, you know, during my internship, you actually learn a lot, um, you know, during your internship but once you yeah. start working. So now let's talk about, um, Okay, can you give a few tips for all the MBA aspirants right now, as in the ones, you know, who have already chosen the school, because we have some students from CAT 22 also, so the ones, you know, who will be getting into a B school right now, as in they already have their calls and all. And then there are also students, you know, who are uh, taking CAT this year. So uh, what suggestions you have for the former and the latter? Um. Something that you want to do before you join an MBA school? Yes, like yeah. MBA so school. The, yeah, some of them have got their calls and everything. And now they're just waiting for that bit of time before they join. Okay. Yeah. Anything um, for them? Yeah. Uh, don't waste that time that you get right now. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, that's something that everyone does. Hmm. Don't, uh, I'm not telling you that, you know, you have to work. You have to continuously do something. No, I'm not telling you to do that. Hmm. But uh, definitely try and do something. Maybe mm. pursue an interest. Try and work on your CV in some way. Mm. Uh, do a course. Do an internship. Read. Definitely read. Mm. If you're if you're a reader, if you're a reader, read. If you're not a reader, go and you know there are so many other ways. There are podcasts that are available. Learn something. Mm. Um, you will just have talking points um, in your GD. This is something that really helped yes, me. Yeah. I'll be very honest. So. Mm. Um, my GD for PepsiCo India, mm. uh, when PepsiCo came on campus, um, was related to cryptocurrency, if I'm not wrong. Oh, and wow. <laughs> since I was the only lawyer there, yeah. and, um, I knew the legal legality at that mm. point in time. I yeah. used the legal point. Mm. And I didn't have anyone else in the GD to counter. No one yeah. else even right. had a word about it. And mm. when I got shortlisted for the next round, this is something that the panelists told me. Okay. And you know, we remember you because you said this. Okay, uh, somebody is asking uh, a few books. So yeah, you've already said one. Uh, which one was that? Uh, uh, CEO Factory. Yeah, CEO Factory. And two more books uh, to understand sales and marketing or to even find passion in sales and marketing or anything to do with EU, uh, EQ as in if there is something, uh, you know, how to improve EQ. Is, is there yes. any book that you can just remember? Yes. Um, so mm. there's one book for marketing that I really like. There's, it's mm. called Hooked. Okay. Hooked, Hooked by mm. Neer Eyal. Mm. Um, and it's basically about how, um, how do you make products that have lasting impressions? Okay. Or how do you make products that are very addicting? Basically, he'll just break down Instagram, uh, all your social media applications. Mm. He'll break it down for you and he'll try and explain how um, you know, how is it that they're able to hook you on that? Hence the title hooked. Hmm. And it's a basic marketing book. It's a fantastic book. Hmm. It's one of the best books that I've read. Um, another book for EQ, if you're asking, I mean, it's obviously, again, the tried and tested Daniel um, Goldman, hmm. that's Emotional Intelligence. Yeah. Hmm. It's, hmm. it's a fantastic book. It's a very old book, Correct. but a very hmm. good read. It's a very good read. Um, you'll be able to just understand what I mean, what emotional intelligence means. Yeah. Which book do you want me to name again? Yeah, which one? <laughs> just say all the names. <laughs> okay, so uh, there's CEO yeah. Factory CEO by Sitapati. Mm. Um, there's Hooked, Hooked. by H-O-O-K-E-D mm. by Neeraya. Mm. 
Mm. And there is uh, emotional intelligence mm. by Daniel Boone. Mm. Uh, another yeah. book, very mm. popular, Shoe Dog. If you like autobiographies. Okay. Which one was it? Shoe Dog. Oh yeah. Okay. Shoe Dog. Shoe mm. Dog by Phil Knight. Mm. So there are certain instances that I even used um, during my stints from mm. his from his learnings. Okay. So I think that's a that's a good book. It's a very easy read. It's an autobiography. Hmm. Correct. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's all we have time for uh, for this session. And I uh, would like to thank all the attendees for the lovely questions. And thank you so much, Isha Dave, for all the insights on sales and marketing and the kind of career one can expect in sales and marketing. Thank you so much, Isha. Thank you. Thank thank you, everyone. All the very best. Um, please don't stress out. Don't have misconceptions about sales. It, <laughs> it's great. It's it's. Yeah. You'll do fine. Yeah. And thank you so much, Kalyani, for having me. This was this was a great session. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure.